It is Isaiah 54, 2 through 3. And this was one that actually um, Brother Perry Hart shared. Mm -hmm. um, it says, Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes, for you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. And when I read this verse, I just feel like this is just the goodness of God. Like his desire is for us to enlarge and to stretch. Why? Because he wants to fill. He wants to fill. And the end goal is this, that your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. That is God's goodness. Mm -hmm. In other words, so that his goodness can go forth and change cities, change nations, change generations, all from us enlarging, enlarging our heart, enlarging what he's asking us to do. And so I wanted to give a testimony. Chelsea, you can come up. She shared with um, this with me, was it last Sunday? After Last Sunday after service. And this was um, just a testimony from when Brother Perry Hart was here, so I'll let her share it. Yeah, real quick. I um, just saw this in my heart, so I want to just encourage you in this. But um, obviously we're not into the message yet, so maybe you don't have your, your notepads and your pens ready, but I need you to pull them out, everybody. If it's your phone notes, that's okay, too. Um, because the reason why is because reviewers are doers. And we're reviewing what Perry Hart gave here a couple weeks ago on September 25th. We're reviewing God's goodness. And there's things that he's probably told you to do that you've not done yet because you didn't write it down and you forgot. And that was the case for me. Okay. There's been multiple times he's asked me to enlarge, to stretch out those stakes to my tent. And life's tough. And when you're sitting down and paying bills and you're just trying to meet the needs of your family, sometimes enlarging seems impossible. And, but God, he is the God of impossible. Yeah. And so with that being said, when Perry Hart was here and he said, enlarge. And I just asked the Lord in that moment, I was like, okay, I know I need to pay bills tonight. I haven't paid my tithe yet. So Lord, tell me, what is that? And Perry Hart at that time started throwing out numbers, $50, hundred dollars. I'm like, whoa, okay. Um, that's not where I'm at, but Lord, I know right now in this place, I can blow $25 like that. And I think we all could, even the tough ones who are having problems meeting the bills. We blow money like this and we don't even realize it. So with that being said, I thought, okay, $25, I can do $25 today, right now. And by faith gave the extra $25. And again, I was sitting there telling myself that's insignificant. $25 isn't enough. And I know our heart's desire is to give so much more than that. And because I couldn't give more, what my heart actually desired, there was a, a pause. There was a holdup because what's $25? You know? And so $25, faith extended. Lord, it's not mine. $25 to me is 10000 to him. So quit limiting me. Yeah. Quit limiting what I feel like I can do with $25. Yeah. We blow $25 like that. Yeah. So enlarge, stretch those stakes today. I'm challenging you. Because you're looking at the Christmas outreach and you want to be a part, but things are so tight. It's tough. But God. Extend those tents. Allow his word to come in and dominate your finances. Mm -hmm. Allow his word to come in and make the change so that your heart's desire to give more can be met. That's right. And so from that, $25, before the next paycheck came about, um, well, actually, there's another part I wanted to say. Um, how many know that when a word comes forth for our church body, for pastors, it's just as much for you individually and for your family as it is the church body? That's right. Right? We're taught that very well. And so all this time, these words are coming forth so powerfully for the past couple of months, so powerful from y'all coming back from Hawaii, just enlarging. We're increasing. Our influence is increasing. We're going further than ever before, and we can't do it here. So that was the holdup, right? The here mm -hmm. for even giving 25 extra. Yeah. Okay. So with that being said, all these words are for you. 
So write it down. Take these notes. The Lord's telling you. You know what it is. It might be $10. That $10 seed is not insignificant with God. That's right. Amen. Don't let your limit of it's only $10 yeah. not impact the kingdom for thousands of dollars. Yeah, that's right. Amen. So Perry Hart came forward, gave the message. I gave 25 extra within the next week, week and a half. Uh, Chad and I's income increased <laughs> more than I could think dream imagine what i was expecting far above far above tent stakes enlarged the power of god's word coming in and dominating the tent filling it overflowing it so now i'm standing in a place of guess what it's not 25 dollars we're gonna reevaluate those finances and that budget because i can promise you it's a lot more than 25 extra amen that's right so it's just a triple down effect like you keep enlarging, mm-hmm. he's going to keep filling. Yeah, that's right. Keep enlarging, yeah. he's going to keep filling. Amen. Okay. So then not only that, but um, 2020, I had gone to, there was a buyout in our company and didn't know these people. This guy's from Chicago and he, I just was like, they, they said eventually we would need a regional manager for the state of Arkansas. Okay. I'm not even a manager at this point. I'm working the front desk, okay? I go to this guy, and I'm like, hey, Chelsea, it's really nice to meet you. So glad to have you here. Um, That regional manager position you talked about, I'm interested. I don't have a college degree. I didn't finish college. Nothing special about me. I'm on the front desk. But God, there was something that stuck with him. And he spread the word. And then as more hires kept coming into the business and fast forward two years, everybody that met me from corporate knew who I was before they met me. Not me. I didn't do anything special. And so um, now we're walking into the fulfillment, starting, we're taking baby steps into the increase of influence that we've talked about. It's not just for the church body, but it's for you guys. Because the increase in your influence, we're able to reach people for Christmas outreach. It's the connections. It's the people that we know. So as our influence increases, obviously, so does our reach. Yeah, That's right. So just be encouraged by that today. Hopefully, there's things that the Lord spoke to your heart that I'm not even saying that you know he's told you before. There's things that we didn't write down and we didn't do. So write it down, review it and do it and watch him enlarge and fill and dominate in your life. Amen. Amen. Let's give her a hand clap. Isn't that awesome? Thank you, Chelsea. Thank you, Lord. So I believe he is doing that. He's increasing us to be a blessing. I love that she said that. Like now that the Lord, you know, she stepped out in faith. She gave what the Lord was telling her to do. He increased her. And now they're saying we can be more of a blessing. Like that is, that is the whole point of the blessing is not to just heap it upon ourselves. We get blessed. Yeah. But it's to be a blessing and it's to cause others to see the goodness of God. Amen. And so we're going to, we're going to give this morning. Um, and I, you know, if you can't touch your toes, doesn't mean you shouldn't stretch. You know, some people, they can bend down and they're like, put their hands on the ground. I'm like, touch the tips with my tippy tips. But you know, the more you do it, so many times we look at other people and like, well, I can't stretch like that. Don't, don't compare to anybody else other than just stretch, stretch. And you know what, what you do before you run? You stretch. So we're believing for that. But anyway, so just talking about growing, causing a, a, a church to grow, the, the, I, I just felt like it was time that, we, that we, I would lead you in declaration over our tithes and offerings as we come together. And so I wrote a declaration uh, in, in, while I was actually driving. I just had my pen and paper, just let the Lord fill my heart with what we're supposed to be declaring as, as a body. Um, maybe it doesn't sound like everybody else's. That's good because this is for us. And, uh, and so it's up here, and I want to declare, uh, come into agreement and ask the Lord for what we need to have uh, for his glory. And so... Um, Can we stand up? Yeah, let's stand up. Together. And grab your offering or your phone or however you give.
or your wife's hand. Maybe yep. you already, maybe you're giving Spouse. online. Yep. But I think it's important for us to ex- extend our faith. If you're if you're giving online, you know, man, release your faith. Yep. Uh, when you have when it's time to worship the Lord with our tithes and our offerings and giving to the Lord, right. release your faith. This is a great time. So um, I, I wrote it up here, but I'm just going to pray it. You can follow along. You can. Uh, however you want to do it, but it's just a declaration. Father, today we come, you can say it with me out loud. Father, today we come into agreement with you and say in this house and in my house, there is provision for your vision. In no way will we be limited to serve our generation. We purpose to be an extension of your goodness so others would experience you. Right now, we ask you for wisdom and to direct our steps into a place of overflow. Our lives will bring increase to your kingdom. So, Father, we say thank you today, right now, for the wisdom uh, and the direction of our steps into the place of overflow for your glory. Father, we say thank you for wisdom. I just want you to see as if you're receiving the answer, the wisdom and the steps into the place of overflow for his glory. Father, we thank you that we are an extension of your goodness in this time. And we thank you that many would come to know you. We commit these tithes and these offerings to your work, to your service. We thank you for your vision for every dollar that comes in. We call it blessed and we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. You can give. I'm aware of the time, just so y'all know. It's 11.05. I believe that the Lord was doing a whole lot of things in us this morning. He was expanding us. He was really getting to some, some things. And so um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of maybe keep this closed mostly and just talk from my heart about these things. And I'm going to open just this, all right? Um, don't you love God's Word? Don't you love that he is always speaking and he's not just limited even to these pages, but he speaks to the, and he leads to your heart. All of God's word, this is all of God's word, but God's words are about your spouse. God's words are about the job, about the car, about all these kind of things uh, to you. And so thank you, Lord. And so I just want to take a, take a minute and I just want to give you maybe an update of some things that are going on. Uh, in me, um, not just in me, but I believe in this house, and I think it's been going on for a long time because I think it's the body of Christ as a whole. And um, it is about expansion. It is about being on point. It is about um, the ripeness of the season. I'm going to say that again, the ripeness of the season. There was a message at the beginning of this year. Uh, how many of you remember Trey Bollinger when he was here? He talked about Horeos, right? The moment, right place, right time. You know, like in the right place, at the right time. Maybe you've even said it this way. We're in the right place at the right time doing the right things with the right people. You might have even added with the right words, with the right, I got the right deal, with the, whatever it might be. I'm in the right place at the right time. Horeos. The right place at the right time. That word, that's what it means. The right place at the right time. Uh, another translation of that word would be ripeness. It is right place right time. How many of you know you can go to the garden or you can go out and you want to pick that apple from that tree? Maybe you have one in your backyard and you just can't wait to get one and you go there and maybe it's, maybe it's August and, and you're like, they look good. You go to, nah, it's just not, it's just not the right place at the right time. It's just not ripe. It's just not hooray. It's not the moment. It's not the moment yet. It's going to, it's coming. It's a promise. It's a seed there that it's that God has spoken to you, and inside of each and every one of you, that there are seeds that are for a right place and a right time. And so many times we 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 run out of uh, of the the patience and the endurance uh, to stay in the place to experience the right place and the right time. 
Colossians 1.11, I was uh, it's on our board for our family. We have a vision board. And uh, actually, there was a couple houses built back behind. This is where I smashed my thumb and told the testimony and all that. Anyway, and then, so this vision board, it's so funny, it's sitting in the window uh, where, of our prayer room where I look out over the field. But now it covers up those two houses. So, I mean, you know, I think that's so cool. Anyway, not the houses are bad. It just, I thought that was so cool. So I'm looking out, I'm looking out, the, and I'm looking at this in Colossians 1. 11, it tells us this. It says, I pray that you would be strengthened with his, from, from his glory, from his might, uh, that you would have strength to in, for patience and endurance with joy. Patience, I don't think you, you might have, I think it's Colossians 1.11. I know it's in the notes but I, because I was thinking about it. But that you would be strengthened. God wants you and I to have strength from within, from his glory, from his goodness, that it would be him that's strengthening us. All right, to do what? To endure, right? To have patience with joy because there is a right place and a right time. There is a hurrahs, there is a right place and a right time for you and me. Okay? And so, uh, the, and I believe that we're coming into that place where the sower and the reaper, I mean, the right place, right time is happening a whole lot faster. And so I want to just talk about these boots for a moment. Because I, I, I believe that they were, um, they're, again, this is the second pair of boots in, in just under a week that were given to me. And I've never, I, never, I guess other than this set of boots, I've never had boots given to me, okay? My brother gave me these a few years back. I wear them all the time, all right? Um, but, but this was significant to me because the first set I got, um, they were short little anklet boots, and, and I was at a hunting camp, um, and, and so a bunch of guys are there, and they're kind of laughing at me because I look like I got these cute little galoshes, you know. And I was like, yeah, y'all are sweating. I got these little ankle boots, you know. And, and to me, um, here's what I, I, I thought. And then the, today's this message is just boots on the ground. It's time to get to work. More, 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 it's, it's time not to, not to be waiting. And, you know, um, I felt like these ankle boots were because they were summer boots, they're summer boots. You know how, how many times you and I, we wait for everything to be right before we're going to step out? Yeah. And these boots were ones that were like, you put them on now and you can wear them. And it's August. It was, shoot, when we were there, it was 90-something degrees and we're supposed to be hunting. My feet aren't sweating. In other words, it's, I, and everyone's like, hey, get these boots off. They're rolled down around their ankles, everything else. I got the ankle boots, you know. Ooh, hey, I'm moving. I'm going. And I thought that was just so, so cool. I'm like, oh, I love these. I love, I love, I'm so excited about these boots, right? And then I come back and I get, uh, I, I, I get a phone call and said, hey, I got these boots for you. Got these boots for you. And, and, and they said this, uh, or actually Chris Becker, I don't know if he's here this morning. He called me and said, I got these boots. And he said, actually, this is interesting because a lot of times when people give you boots, they don't say, oh, I got these hunting boots that are blah, 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 like this. They just say, hey, I got these boots for you, or I got these hunting boots for you. Got... These are not just hunting boots. He said, these are snake boots. And I thought that was significant. Because sometimes we don't take the step because everything's not ready. It's hot. It's too early. All these kind of things aren't in place yet. You know, How many of you can give some excuses why you don't want to take that step? I mean, she was talking about stretching, taking that step. We're talking about taking the step, being a doer, stepping out based upon the promises and things, or not even promises, but pictures in your heart. We're going to see this here this morning. And so we, we, we don't because it's just, it's too hot, it's too hard, it's too heavy, it's too, I, I'm, I'm not good enough, I'm, what do I have, what, you know what I'm saying? We disqualify the, and we, we talk ourselves out of the very word of God that is our provision and not only our provision, but the, the advancement of God's kingdom and for his glory and therefore your fulfillment. You are most fulfilled when you are doing what you were created for and that is living for his glory. So many times if, we would, if we're, we would stop looking at what we're doing for our fulfillment instead of look at what we're doing for His glory, we'd find the, the right things. We'd be doing the right things, we'd find, and we'd find the strength, and we'd find the purpose, because would, our why would, would carry us past the what. Yeah. Right? How many of you know it's torture wrapping Christmas? Well, some of y'all don't do this, but I do. It's, I, I, Christmas Eve night, Right? Anybody wrap presents Christmas Eve night? Okay, good. Oh, thank you. 
And it's late, right? It's late, and you already had that full day, and da da da. And you know, tomorrow morning, and the kids are going to be coming in, and all this kind of crazy. You know what happens? You get that wind. Why? You get that because there's a why behind what you're doing. And and when we have the why behind what we're doing, it carries us. It causes us to do way more than we normally would do, way more than we normally could do, and with joy. So for his glory, when I would, when I, instead of going for my fulfillment, I'm just not fulfilled in doing this. So many people are making decisions about their lives based upon their fulfillment and what they need instead of what's going to bring God glory. And that, from that place, I'm telling you, for, for his glory, he'll, he'll be able to lead and guide you, and there'll be strength and all these kind of things. Okay, don't talk yourself out of the very thing that God wants you to be, have. So I got these, these boots that were ankle boots. Man, it's time to go. It's like, it's right now, right now. If you put them on right now, it's time to go. It's time to act on the word of God to you. Time. But then I got these ones. And they're snake boots. And then there's other, there's other times you don't have enough, you don't, or you don't feel like you're ready, or you don't feel like you're good enough, or you don't feel all these things. But then there's other, that's a good excuse to not take a step for God. But then there's this other kind of step that why you don't really want to go walking around that pond, or you don't really want to be out in the, you know, think of Austin Howard, he asked me, is there snakes down here earlier this, this year, setting up the hunting, he's like, is there snakes down, yeah, there's snakes down there, there's snakes, but we got boots on, but we got boots on, so I thought this was just, just really, to me, it just spoke to my heart, there'll be snakes where you're walking, the things that God's calling you to, but it won't affect you. There'll be snakes. There's snakes. For you to step out and you to carry what you're supposed to be carrying for his glory, there'll be snakes. But you got boots. I got boots. Put them on. Put them on. And, and, and so it's time that we uh, would, would, would pick up and, and, and take these steps that God has designed us to be taking. I mean, I'm talking about advancing for his glory, that my life is more than just about me. It's about carrying a message. There's a message, and that's the message of Jesus, guys. It's the message of Jesus. And But the message of Jesus is not just, I, I want you to hear this, because uh, even Chelsea, she was talking about the words that come out. They come out for the church, but they come out for you. Well, you are the church. We are the church. If your family's hurting, the church is hurting. If, you're, if you have no vision, the church is lacking vision. If you have, come on. So this is for you. This is for the church. This is the influence. The works uh, that are to be done in this world are to be done through his saints, God's holy people. That's you. Uh, my job is to equip you to go do those things. For, so you would see and say, hey, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I will. You know, we say something around here. We say yes. And saying yes brings into manifestation the unlimited possibilities of God. What is the key to seeing what you can't do? Yes. It's What's the key to, for Peter to walk on that water? Step. What was the key to, 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 to you see, to... To, to the nets being filled with fish. It was beyond them. But there was a word. There was a throw of the net. What was the key to feeding these thousands of people? It was bringing what you had. And, and this is childlike faith. And calling it enough. Stepping out. Instead of disqualifying everything that's in us. And, and begin to believe this way. So here's, I'm talking about carrying the message of the gospel everywhere you go. I'm talking about in your families. I'm talking about concerning your schooling. I'm talking about for your friends. I'm, I'm having friends. I'm talking about every area. Everything. Everything. And I, I want to go to Ephesians this morning. I want to go to Ephesians because I want you to know that for the plan that God has for you, that he's made ready for you, I want to go ahead and read Ephesians chapter 2. For it is by grace that you've been saved. Ephesians 2.8. It's by grace you've been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works that anyone could boast. Let me say it this way. I'm looking out right here, and there is not one MVP right here. There's no MVPs in the kingdom of God. So your grace to give, 
Awesome. Are you giving according to your grace? Or are you giving better than the others that are in this place? If you're grace to give and you're only giving better than some of the others, that's what I'd, I think that's how God does sometimes. He goes, because, he, you know, Jesus looked at the offerings and he goes, somebody say, <laughs> sometimes we got to do that to ourselves. Like, really? Really? That's, all, that's what you're going to do with that grace? With the grace I gave you? With the grace I gave you, that's what you're going to do? With the grace I gave you and that personality that people love so much, that's what you're going to... I've spit in everything, you know? That's what you're going to do with that? Just make everybody like you instead of use, it, use, use their platform? With that gift to play, to play that game, that's what you're going to do with it? Dance and look at me? That's what you're going to do with that? What are you doing with your grace? What are you doing? What are we doing with our grace? With your grace to have, to have business and to do business and you're doing that? Is it for the glory of God or is it not? With that grace to be a mom and to be a... What are you doing with that? Just making sure that the potpourri is on and the spices and the ovens, like, or are we are we imparting and making world changers and 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 having this time not just so I can be refreshed, but I'm refreshing others. You know what I'm saying? What am I doing for the glory of God? What am I doing with the grace? It's time that this place uses the grace. It's time that in your house, grace flows, grace flows, and there's more grace, and then there's more grace, and there's more grace. I want you to know this morning that there is the, the plans and the gifts and the calls he's, he has for you. They're to each and every one of you in your work and your partnering with the grace is not what makes you worthy. Oh, watch out. Step. You know, sometimes I thought, you know, what would happen if I just stepped off here and didn't even know it and fell? I probably would be like, oh, man, that hurt, guys. Because I, you never know. I mean, I'll trip and it's, it's OK, you know. All right. Anyway, here we go. I, I lost my spot. There it is. Um, but there's no MVPs. There's, there's called people. It's not by works that anyone would boast, Ephesians 2.9. And so we are, somebody say we are, for we are, we are, we are. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do what? Do work. Come on, do work. Kids say this all the time. Do work. We are created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in advance as our way of life. You know that God has prepared in advance for you and me to walk in a way of life. Prepared. Everything is made ready and available. I'm actually going to open this up because there's a definition. Remember, remember Ephesians 6, 15, where it says, it's talking about put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. And then Ephesians 6, 15 talks about having your feet shod or you put on, right? Nobody's putting your shoes on for you. You put them on. Put on what? Put on the uh, feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. That's NIV. I love that word readiness uh, because that's, that's the picture of what's going on. When you, what you and I carry is this, that everything that you need to carry the message of the gospel of peace has been made ready. Here's what's going to happen. These boots will never be put on. They will not be shod upon your feet unless you realize that what you're supposed to be carrying, you've been given everything that you need to carry that. And there are hurrahs, right place, right time that God has prepared in advance for you to be there with those people, with those words, with the power that's in you and for you. In you is a picture. In you is a rich. The riches in you is the power that you need for everything. It's been made ready. And unless you see this, Fit your feet with the readiness that comes, that, co that comes from the gospel of peace. This peace, the word peace there is Irene, which means wholeness, everything put together. God has put everything together for your and my life already. We just saw this in Ephesians chapter 2. That you were called and you've been saved not by your works, but by his works. 
And he says that uh, you're God's workmanship created. This is, again, verse 10, Ephesians 2.10. God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance as our way of life. How is the way of your life? God prepared it. He made it ready. He made, it, he made a way. You maybe heard this said, God makes a way when there is no way. Yeah, he already has. He already made a way. For you and me. He already has made, made a way. And, and it's this, this word right here, preparedness. Uh, or he made ready for us. He said that the, the, there's, there's the picture of, the, of that you and I are to walk in is this understanding that God has already made everything that you need. And I want to read this very definition because I want you to hear what, it, what it's like uh, to live for God in, in a way that um, this just this understanding. Ready. All necessary preparations are done. This is what it means, this word, to be ready. Feet shod with the readiness or the preparation of the gospel of peace, is what another translation would say. With the preparation. That you and I would put on these shoes that have, with the, w- these shoes with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Understanding this, that I'm going with the message of God's completeness and everything has been made ready. It's time to go. The, everything's in place. We're not putting soldiers on the ground without all the equipment necessary. And so this is where Paul prays in Ephesians chapter 1. He says, I'm praying for you guys. And here's what I'm going to pray. And, I, and there's three things that we're going to have to get. And then I'm going to erase the excuses that would erase the excuses for us not stepping out. There's three things that he prays for the church to get. Three things. And you, it would, I would write the this, the this, the this. I pray that you would know the, the this. I would pray you know the this. I pray you know the this. Because when you know these things that are for you, you have no excuse you have no excuse. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. Now for this reason, ever since I heard about you, your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all the saints, I've not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the, the glorious Father, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, or that he would give you a spirit of unveiling that you would see differently, that you wouldn't just see just with your natural eyes, but there would be a spirit that would be of wisdom, revelation, unveiling in the knowledge of him. I ask, and we know that by wisdom, God's wisdom, a house is built, right? His house is built. God's wisdom. So many times we put so much pressure on our hands instead of the Bible saying, where we see in the Bible, he says that God's building his kingdom. He's, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Just trust in the Lord. If we would, if we would be, d- d- just do what he's asking us to do, I would say loving each other, loving one another, being in that place of loving and believing the best, I'm telling you, things would open up. If God wants to do something in a service, and you don't understand it, how somebody responds to the Lord, what's your, what's your role at that moment? To pass judgment or to say, thank you, Lord. I'm telling you, there are moves, there are steps because the snakes are in the house that haven't been taken. Don't, let's not be a snake. You know, with a split tongue, two face. Hey, brother. Oh, I just love your heart for the Lord. Here she goes again. There are steps that must be taken. Don't let's not be a snake. Let's not be a snake. I ask that the eyes, he says this, I ask that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. And you, these are the three things we're going to talk about today or just get to you. And I ask that you would know, that you would know, that you would know for yourself, that you'd be able to not have heard about, but know, be convinced of the riches, or excuse me, the hope of his calling. What's the hope? A picture. 
I'd ask, here's what I'm, here's my, this is what just this whole message is, boots on the ground. How do you get boots on the ground? There's this prayer. And this prayer was a prayer that was prayed over you this week, multiple times. Declarations made over your life, multiple times. That you would see the picture and you would be convinced of the picture, the hope to which you've been called. That those desires in your heart, that you would say, yeah, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to step up and be a blessing and be, uh, be an influence in that place. And that you would see that you maybe got stuck in the muck because you've been in this job for a certain length of time and you don't see the change in the, in the place where you've been at. Matter of fact, you feel like you've taken on the, the culture of that place. Let me tell you, I pray that the eyes of your, uh, your heart be enlightened and you know and you know and you're convinced of the hope. We need to know for our, these boots to be active and not just be empty, I need to know the hope. I need to know the picture. And i got to be convinced that I know God's voice and the strangers I don't follow. What am I supposed to do with my life? Follow the Lord. Well, I just don't know if I hear it. Stop saying that. You're disagreeing with what God says. His, are you a child of God? I am. How do you know? Because His Spirit bears witness with my spirit that I am. That same way that you know when you pray, if you ask Jesus and you surrender your life to him, it says his spirit will bear witness with your spirit. That same way that you, you know he's going to lead your whole, your whole life. So don't, so don't disagree with God. Instead, agree and come under and you'll find that more grace is there. When I humble myself and I say, Lord, I, I've said that I don't know how and I, don't, and I struggle and, I, and I'm going to change that and I'm going to come under what you said and I'm going to say, I do know. And you know what? I thank you that I have the hope. I have the picture. I know the picture to which I've been called. I know where my steps are to go. I know how I'm to use this grace. I know, I know, I know at least, maybe not the 1,600 steps, but I at least know this step. Yeah. Guys, I, it's time we stop waiting until we know 14 steps, and we just say, this is what I know to do right now. And this is what I know to do right now. Because if, if he showed you everything, then guess who would get the glory? Man, you sure are smart. Man, man, you're just so amazing. Thank you. Nope. I pray that you would know the hope of his calling. You know what that means? You have a calling. You know you're called of God? The call of God is all over your life. I can say that with all authority to every person in here. The call of God is on your life. And when you say that to somebody, or when they hear it, not when you say it, when they hear it, the call of God, the call of God is, all on your li- is on your life. The call of God is on your life. When you hear that, it changes something. It changes your days. It changes your, your outlook. It changes everything about, you, about everything. The call of God is on my life. He called me. I'm one of his servants. Just as in that parable, he called three servants and he gave unto them. He gave to them. You know, you've been given gifts, not just graces, but gifts, spiritual gifts. Ephes- or not Ephesians, but Corinthians talks about gifts of the Spirit that are given to each one severally as he wills, women included. So each one. Gifts of the Spirit of God. Given. So the call of God is on your life. There's grace given to you. And gifts of the Spirit or the helper, the Spirit of God, the counselor, the helper, the advocate, the strengthener, the the power of God to save, to bring salvation, they're given to you. You know what gifts that are given to you? They're made to be given. To be mobilized, to be activated. So the call of God is on your life. You need to go look at the gifts of the Spirit in, in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, I believe, think, or 14. Go look at first, those gifts, and you'll see that there's gifts of working of miracles. There's gifts of, 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 of word, um, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits. There's gifts. Of the, you know there's discerning of spirits. You can see somebody has a, a, a spirit that's working on them and just jacking with them. You can see that. There's people that you don't even know that you would call that, and you just thought you just had good intuition or whatever it was called. No, son, it's a gift of the Spirit. It's a gift of the Spirit. And you see that, but there's something you're supposed to do about it. 
The gift of faith, special faith. That you would, that you would see something and it's not right and you would say, it, it would rise up in you God's word because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God and you would say what God says about the matter and, and it would just impart into them whew, victory. Impart into them just, whew. man, I'm telling you, you need to go see, you're carrying it. You might not know it, but just because you don't know what you're carrying, just because you don't know what you're carrying, does not excuse you from being accountable. So I pray that you would know the hope to which you're called. And I pray that you would know the riches. I pray that you know the hope to which is of his calling, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. I pray that you would know the riches. Rich. Heavy with everything. More than enough. I pray that you would know. Sometimes there's things that God has called you to. The calling. And you're trying to fulfill it based upon only what you know how to get or get yourself. And so you don't take the step. I'm telling you, there's things that the Lord has been dealing with me on as of late that it's like, ah, I don't know how to do that because I, I, don't, I don't know where we're going to get that kind of money. You know, even if it's just $40,000 right here, just 40 grand, just 40 grand for this year to, 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 to take this step. Just, let's just take that step. Ah, 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 what if I miss it? Well, you didn't get the first part. What is that that you know? that I know, is I pray, I pray that you know, because when you know, you, you have that step, but I pray that you not only know, but I pray that you know the hope, you know the picture, but I pray that you know the riches, that my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory, according to his riches and glory. I pray that you know that you, that you are, are, are a child of the king, that there's an inheritance. I pray that you know the riches of his inheritance. Because I'm his son and he's asked me to, then I can go with confidence knowing he'll provide every need. For, and I'm talking not just about some spiritual thing, everything in your life that you do. Raising your kids uh, at school, uh, at work. It is spiritual. It's time we d disconnect this notion that spiritual things only happen on Sunday mornings. Or Wednesday nights or at some conference. No, this happens Monday morning on the drive. It happens at the water cooler on, on Thursday afternoon. It happens every, it happens at the dinner table and you have a discerning of spirits and your kids said, how was today? Good. Anybody ever heard that, mom and dad? How was your day? Good. <laughs> what was good about it? Good. I mean, that's about good. It was good. And you have a discerning of spirits and you know that there's a direction. It's a gift for your children. To free them. It's a gift for people. You, 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 someone comes and says, hi, you're at the volleyball game again. Or at the basketball game again. Or the football game again. And so that's just the season you are in in life. But while you're there, there's a picture. And there's an equipping to where you can do what's in your heart for these kids that are coming up and saying hello. I pray that you would know the hope, the picture. I pray that you would know the riches and then no longer would you say, I can't because. I can because. I can because. Because what? I'm a child. I'm a child with an inheritance and I know the riches. I know the riches to which have been given to me. So I know the picture. I know the hope. I pray that you would know the hope. I pray that you would know the riches. And then I pray that this. I pray that you would know the power. This has been one, you know, I don't, I don't think I'm the only one here because actually I know I'm not. Because what the Bible says when you're born again, the love of God gets shed abroad in your heart. Let me just say it this way. When you're born again, the love of God takes up residence in your heart. And so there's desires that the love of God in you has. And, and, and we say this a lot here that because the love of God is in, in me, I, my heart can be satisfied by nothing other than that which satisfies God's love. And that's seeing people experience his goodness. And so you see people, you, you might be walking by right place, right time, gate. Horeas. Horeas. 
The gate called what? The gate called beautiful. That word beautiful, right place, right time. You might be walking right by the right place at the right time, the right place at the right time, but you aren't aware of what you have and the power that you do have. You think, I don't have silver and gold. I don't know what to do here at the moment. Or you might know what to do at the moment, but you, you, don't, you don't have money, but you, you doubt the power that's in you or what's given to you. Oh, yeah, I'm talking about the power of God, the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives and dwells on the inside of you. Go to, this, go to Ephesians 3.20 so you're convinced of this. Not only do we see it here that you would know this power, but right here, now to him who is able to do so much more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is, would be at work if I did everything right today, could be at work today if I would have came to church, but I didn't. I'm watching online, sitting at home on a later date. His power that is at work within us because I didn't cuss my, my kids out yesterday. His work that's at work within us to, 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 to meet this need in this guy's life on the construction site, but it can't be at work within me because I looked at porn last night. It is by grace you've been saved, not of works. See, if you and I would understand that we have work to do, we would be paid less attention to our works and what God's asking us to do. Now to him who is able to do so much more than you ask, think, or imagine, you might, and this is a lot of times you're saying, well, I don't do any of those things and this and that and that. No, but you just forfeit the power that's in you and you walk by people and the Lord tells you to go do something in Walmart and tells you to go do something, but you don't know. You, you might know that you're God's son or princess, but you doubt him being able to use you the way he says he wants to use you. And so your prayers are always bottled up and left uncapped or not cap or left capped. Uncap it. Uncap the power. Somebody open the, open the power, open the power that's within you by opening your mouth, by opening your mouth and praying the per according to what? He says, now to him who is able to do so much more than we ask or imagine, according to his power that's within us, to him be the glory in the church, to him be the glory in you. Oh, we're going to, to him be the glory on Sunday morning in the church. This is not the church. This is the church. We're going to have church on the hill. The church is a people. It's, it's not a building, but it is an assembly because it's one body. It's one body. This is the church. So to him be the glory in the church. Father, to you be the glory in me, the church. Today, well, I, I'm going to get order for my days. I'm going to get understanding and wisdom because in me, there's to be glory for you. In me is the picture. In me is the riches. In me is the power. In me, for what? For your glory. Father, get glory today. Thank you for your glory. And so he'll, you'll get, when you, if you would just, you and I would just pray that prayer. Lord, use me for your glory today. You'd be able to take a step. Use me for your glory today. And he'd show you a picture of that person. I want you to love him. And if he told you to love him, then guess what? Don't doubt the riches that you have. I only have a fish and a loaf. Don't doubt the riches you have to bring about the picture he showed you. And don't you dare doubt the power that he gave you and that's in you. Because he wants, he desires, he needs his feet. His feet moving. How, don't doubt when you're walking by the gate called beautiful, right place, right time, that you have something in you that will make a difference in that man's life. There's a scripture that we have posted on the wall over here. It's where Awaken was really born out of. How, how beautiful. This is Mark, or not Mark, but this is Romans. Romans what? 10, 
10.15. Romans 10.15. How right place, right time. How ripe. How everything has come together. How, how you have the picture. How you have the riches. How you have the power. How you have the right place, the horeos. How beautiful are the feet. How right place, how right time, how right place, how right time are the feet of those that have made the decision to simply carry the good news. The good news. What's the good news? What has God directed you to do? Where's the picture? What's his word? What's bringing that? Right place, right time. It's ripe. Let me tell you, it's ripe. How do you get to the right place? The good news. Oh, the good. How do I know? Because he's prepared in advance things for you and I to walk in. Ephesians chapter preparedness. He said, if you want to get your feet active, if you want to be moving, then you're going to have to shod your feet with the readiness that things have been made ready. They've been made ready. It's been made ready. I have no reason to not go because I know when I simply say yes, the readiness is there. What's, what's been made ready? The picture, the riches, the power. Right place, right time. Where's it found? Carrying. Carrying a message. How beautiful are the feet of those who that carry the good news. Father, thank you that my feet are in the right place at the right time, doing the right things with the right people. Right place, right time. I'm right place, right time. That's, I, it's time the boots move. It's time we move in the, in the place of right place, right time. You're saying, what does this mean? You're just encouraging me. No, I'm saying, get the picture. Believe that you have the riches, the strength, the ability. And then... The power. And stop looking at yourself. Because he called you. He called you. Let's stop calling ourselves what, what we think about ourselves. Let's start calling ourselves what God says about us. I called you. I chose you. I graced you. Use the grace. Let me say this. Look at the picture. Tap the riches. Release. Release the power that is in you. The same power that rose Christ Jesus from the dead, Ephesians 1. When he seated him, it's in you. 1 John tells us this. As Jesus is, so are you in this world. I want to pull that up in a few different translations this morning. As Jesus is, First John four seventeen. We read in Ephesians this month, we've been reading in Ephesians that you are his body. You've been raised up to sit together. We're raised up to sit together. We're together being as one. He's the head, we're the body. We read these things, we hear these things. We hear these Christianese things, that's what they become, and we don't understand them. But let me just break it down to super simple. The head and the body are not separate. We are the body of Christ. 1 John 4, 17, as he is, so are we in this world. Let me tell you, don't, let me tell you, Jesus, we, we, we even call ourselves Christians, Christians, like little Christ, little Christ, that's what you are, little Christ. So could I just call you Jesus? Just for, hey, Jesus, don't walk by that person with need today. Don't walk by him. Hey, Jesus, don't do that. Because as he is, so are we in this world. We got to see ourselves as he is. I wish God would do something about that. Well, I'm glad you noticed. Please do. I'm glad you noticed. You caught the picture because if you got the picture, there's the riches. And if you got the picture, there's the power. As he is, 
1 John 4, 17. Throw up a couple translations. I know you have it. As he is, I want you to see it. Maybe write this down for, for you and I to be able to say, boots on the ground. Jesus, here in this place. Here, here. Father, move in our place. Move in, in, in our midst. Move not just in this building. Father, move in our communities. Move on the pasta aisle. 1 John 4, 17. In this way, love has been perfected among us. Completed. Love is to be completed in this day and age. In this 2022, you and me, called by him, prepared in advance, know what? That we would know the picture, that we know the riches, that we know the power, and that we would know that love has been perfected on us, is that we may know have the boldness of the judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Bunch of different translations. Jesus is here through you. Jesus is on the scene today at the hospital. I want I'm just I just want you to pray with the power that's in you. Ephesians 3:20 that's in you. I want you to pray when the next time you see somebody hurting, I want you to pray and I want you just to go as the hands of Jesus. And I want you just to imagine catch the picture what would happen if Jesus laid hands on that person? Then you realize this is Jesus. Father, thank you that you hear me always. Isn't that what he prayed? As he is, so are we in this world. It's time to move. It's time to be active. And you know, um, <laughs> yes is the most powerful thing that you have. Why? Because my yes brings into manifestation God's unlimited possibilities. There's nothing impossible for God. What is it that brings it about? It's my partnership with Him. Let's partner with God. Let's partner with God on, on all these things. And let's bring, bring the message of the gospel that Jesus made a way. And all of heaven, all of the angels are learning, looking down, listening, and learning about God's many-sided wisdom and goodness and love. How, how God, how Lucifer was dealt with this way, yet God, that here we have man made in our, his image and in his likeness. And God said, I'm going to deal with them in this way. Wow. They're learning. Thank you, Lord. We do, let's just stand this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I have, somebody say, I have the hope. I know the hope. I have the riches. I have the power. Because I'm Jesus in this world. You are the body of Christ. I am the body of Christ. Let's be the hands and feet. And that only happens when you and I know, know who we are. Father, today, we just bow our heads, we close our eyes, and I thank you for what you were doing all service, expanding, expanding in us, expanding, enlarging our hearts to see. Father, I thank you for the hearts that were enlarged today to receive and to see and to, to know who you say they are your body Jesus here on this earth and so Father I thank you that we would be just as Jesus bringing the kingdom the kingdom of heaven bringing the kingdom bringing people into the kingdom bringing people to you the king we would, I thank you that the pictures in the hearts from you, that they would know them, that they would know the power, that we would know the power, that we would know the riches, we'd know all of it, and we'd know that you've made ready in advance for us to walk in. Father, I thank you for it. And I just say, go in Jesus' name. Take the step. Take the step. Take the step. And I thank you for the provision in that place, in that step. Father, thank you for the provision. I just thank you for even just seeing it now, the provision as you step forward, forward with even the beginning and the fulfillment of the things in your heart. Father, thank you for that. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Hey, if you're here this morning and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I know it's almost noon here. 
We came to meet with Jesus. And if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, or you maybe you would say, I, 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 maybe I have one time, but I know I'm here today because I'm, I gotta, I gotta come back to Him. I don't want to leave without giving you an invitation to come to Christ. The Bible says that if you just would believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. He said you'd be saved. It's because it was with your heart. And God looks at your heart. And that's the thing. So many times we judge ourselves on the outside, but God the whole time is looking at your heart. And your heart is crying out to God just to be right with Him. Just to be right with Him. And I want to lead you in that prayer. If that's you, why don't you go ahead and lift your hand. If that's you this morning, you say, thank you for your hand. Thank you for your hand, buddy. Thank you for your hand. You know, God loves you. He loves you so much. He loves you so much. I just want to lead you in this prayer. Just pray this with me. Just say, Father, here I am. You found me again. I'm responding to your love and your kindness towards me. Today, I give you my life. I surrender it all to you. I believe that you paid the price for my sins. I call you my Savior. I call you my Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for coming for me, for finding me, not quitting on me. I love you. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Well, we're going to dismiss this morning. If you need healing in your body or prayer for anything, we'd love to pray with you up here. Otherwise, have a great week. We will see you Wednesday night or next week at the Fall Harvest Night. God bless you.